Hey, what's going on everyone? So today I'm going to be showing you how I'm taking my old VHS Hi8 tapes from 22 years ago, back in 1999, how I'm converting those from this to digital and then putting them on my iPad Pro to be able to edit and share and back them up, send them to the cloud, whatever I want to do. I'm going to try to make this video as fast as possible and try to only show you the necessary things. But if you have any questions, make sure you guys comment down below and I'll be sure to try to answer any questions that you may have. Now, what I bought to do this was a Roxio Easy VHS to DVD software here. I'll put affiliate links to this down below in the description. Whenever you purchase this, you have to purchase this for either PC or Mac. It does not work with both. I was trying to find a solution to where I could plug this directly into my iPad. Thought that would make things a lot easier if I could do that but I could not figure out any way to connect this to my iPad Pro to edit the videos. So I'm putting them on my laptop and then I'm gonna transfer them there to my iPad and do all the editing on there. Like I said, this is an old uh, Hi8 VHS camera, but this will work with regular VHS, Hi8, Digital8, many different formats. So when you get this software, basically what you get is an installation CD. If you're like me and don't have a drive to install the cd they give you a link where you can just download it directly now you don't need any key codes or anything to activate the software but you do need this for the software to be active without this the software will not work basically what you have here is an rca cable connection for both your audio and your video so if your device is exporting uh, through rca cables for the old style tv then it should work with this device and it also has an s video input which my camera supports and I do have the cable for that, but you do have to buy the S-Video cable separately if you don't already have it. And then it just plugs into a USB-C port and you should be ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into it real quick, show you guys real quickly how to use this software. And I'm also gonna show in the end a quick example of what the quality of this footage looks like. Because natively, that camcorder back in 1999 only recorded in, I believe, around 480p. So that's very low quality, non-HD, and at first I was a little disappointed, but it's really not too bad, especially if you're viewing it on a cell phone or even an iPad, it's not too bad. But if you're viewing them on the larger TV screens today, 55, 65 inch TVs, then it may be a little bit pixelated. But I will show you guys a quick 20 second sample of that. Now there are different requirements for Windows 10, Windows 8 and everything. Make sure that your computer has those requirements. A lot of people said this did not work with their Windows 10. It worked fine for me, so I don't know what issues they had. Maybe their computer wasn't fast enough. So let's go ahead and show you guys my workflow here. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna take whatever form of playback you have for your existing tapes. In my case, I put my tape right into here and play it through here. So if you're able to plug your system into a TV and play it, you should be able to use this if it has, like I said, RCAs or S-Video. So basically you wanna have your tape in here ready to go, plug your cables in, and then you wanna plug, being that I'm using the S-Video cable, I'm just gonna plug the audio cables into this one, and then plug the S-Video cable into this one, and then I'm ready to connect this to my laptop. All right, so now to get your footage onto your laptop, open up the Roxio Easy VHS to DVD software. Click on video, start a new project, and then up here in the corner, you hit uh, video source. So do you, if you can hear that clicking, the only thing that, I, I don't know why it does that, the only thing that I found to get that clicking to go away is turn the recording level all the way down, then you can go ahead and turn it back up and it usually quits clicking. Sometimes you have to do that a few times. That's one of the quirks about the software, I guess. Um, maybe it's just with my computer, I don't know. But I figured out that's the easiest way to get that clicking noise to stop. Now, when I record these videos, I usually record them at the highest recording level. Uh, you may have to record at a different level depending on your video. Now, for it to pick up a video signal, your camcorder has to be on and playing. So basically what I do is I find where I want to start my recording clip, and then I pause it and then it'll find that signal. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start recording. So I'm gonna change this video name. This is back when I used to do construction. So we'll call this construction. And then you hit the start recording button and then hit play. 
on your camcorder. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this volume down here so that you guys can hear me. But basically you'll see down here that it'll tell you how many seconds you're recording and whatever changes you make on your VHS camera, they will show up on your recording. So for example, if you want the time date code to show and you could show it on your camcorder, it will show in your recording there. That's June 4th, 1999. So you, you can actually uh, re keep that on there if you want that to display. So basically once you get your recording done, you'll see here I'm at 53 seconds. You just hit stop and it'll finish up and it'll put that as a clip right there. So now that's the first clip. Now you can continue, this is one project, you can continue with multiple clips. So this will be my second clip. We'll call this construction two and then we'll start recording and hit play. And there's me back in 1999. <laughs> so we will stop. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this camcorder off because we're done with that for now. I think you guys get the drift. So now I have two clips in here in my, basically my project. So you can, basically these are already saved to your computer, but they're probably not saved in the format that you're going to want. So you can go to an enhancements if you want. You can go to each of these videos and they do have some enhancements that you can do. I've played around a little bit with the denoise. Um, that's really the only one I use. They have stabilizing color correction, but I pretty much will do anything like that in my editing software if I need to. Um, so I, I didn't play around too much with those, so I can't say how well they work. I did try to denoise and didn't see too much of a difference, but basically you can go to each clip like that and select what you want to do with it. And then you could put transitions in between these two and record this as one clip when you convert it. So you just hit next here. And then I don't well, I have a DVD burner, so I'm gonna go to file so I could save it as a file. And I always open up advanced settings and save it as H.264 NTSC. Let's switch this over first over here. Resolution to 720 by 480, 16 by 9. NTSC 29.97 frames per second and I always choose the best quality because I want this video to look the best. Now right here is where you can change your uh, transition. Basically I want this to link with no transition. I just want it to continue steady with one video. And then basically once you get that stuff configured you hit export. Now when it saves it, it saves it as an MPG file initially before you export it into an H.264 file and it will not play natively on a Windows movie and TV app but it will play on Windows VLC player or Windows media player but once you convert this you should be able to play it on any media player or on your iPad so once this is done I'll show you here where the file goes and how I get it from there onto my iPad for editing you can see the project completed successfully so we'll go ahead and hit done and I'm going to close out of here now it's going to want to ask me if I want to save this as a project. I'm not going to save this one. That way you can come back later on and make a new project. So I can go into my files here and go into, I have it saved to videos and easy VHS to DVD. Now when it initially records onto your computer, it saves it as these MPG files. And that's what I said is not compatible with Windows Media Play or Windows Movie Player. So we're going to go back here, and computer is the one that uh, it saves the uh, rendered files to. So you can see here now it's an MP4 file, which should play on any iPhone, iPad, uh, Windows Movie Player, Windows Media Player, VLC Player, any of those it should play. So this is the file that I'm going to want to transfer over to my iPad. So now to do that, what I'm going to do is use my SanDisk solid state drive. And if you guys want to see a speed comparison on this from transferring from the laptop or the iPad back to this or from this to the iPad or laptop, make sure you check out my previous video. I'll put a link down in the description for that if you're interested in knowing more about these. So basically, I'm going to plug this into my computer with this adapter and you will see it shows up as 
video clips F here. So we're going to just drag this construction video over to video clips. And I believe it's already done. All right, so I ejected it there. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my iPad and upload it onto there. So take the adapter off here, plug it into my USB-C, open up the files app, video clips, and it should be at the bottom. There it is there, construction. So I'm going to take that and drag it onto my iPad. And just like that, it is now on my iPad and I can play it from there. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I edit it. So basically, the app that I use on this iPad for all my editing and every single one of my YouTube videos, I've been using LumaFusion for the past year and it has been working out well for me. So I'm going to open that up. LumaFusion. This is actually my last project I worked on. So this is just going to be really quickly, uh, just to show you real quick. Let's, let's open up a new one here, call it Construction. And then we're gonna go ahead and find that clip. It's gonna be, and there it is there. So now this is in my editing software. You can see, say I wanna take a quick clip. Basically I could start there and there, add it into my timeline. That's the first clip. Say I wanted to mix it with uh, another clip of something else. Uh, let's just pick something random. Like I said, this is just an example. Uh, this is from Father or Son Camp. So I've got two clips there. You can add transitions. And then basically once you get your video edited, you wanna export it as a movie to your Photos app. And we're gonna change this resolution. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you go above 480 because it's all you're working with. So we'll keep it at 480. Or let's go ahead and try 720. Let's say you're sharing it on the web. You can select your bit rate, three megabits per second. This is gonna end up a seven megabyte file. Go ahead and render that. And now it'll be in your Photos app. So open up Photos. And here it is. Here's the file that I just saved. And you'll see here, eventually it will switch over there's the second file I added to it. All right, guys, so I hope you found that interesting. I hope now you will know how to back up your old VHS tapes or your old Hi8 tapes onto digital and then get them on the iPad, do some editing. Then from there, you can share them to a cloud. That way they're secure forever. You know, if you have a fire, if something gets, your house gets burnt down, God forbid, or something like that, then you can always have your files digitally up in the cloud or saved to an external flash drive or something stored in a lockbox somewhere, then you'll never lose your memories. So that's one thing I was really uh, adamant about getting done here over the past few years. I've been wanting to do it, but I finally got it done. And I'm very excited to be able to watch some of that old footage from 1999. And I actually shared it with all my family members and they have really enjoyed it over this new year's so thanks for watching guys i hope you found this interesting and helpful if so make sure you guys give a thumbs up and subscribe and i will see you guys around on the next video i'll put links in the description below like i said to everything in this video and i will see you guys around on the next one thanks for watching